So yesterday, March 31st, 2016, was a very interesting day as I learned towards the end of editing my Final Fantasy XI video. Final Fantasy XI was the last online video game for PlayStation 2. The PlayStation Online Network for PlayStation 2 first launched way back in August of 2002 in North America. For many people, the PlayStation 2 going online was the first time any of us had been online, and that was certainly the case for me with SOCOM US Navy SEALs. Many of you probably remember that game, many of you probably remember Twisted Metal Black Online, ATV Off-Road Fury, My Street, which is a game I have not thought about in years, Frequency, Madden NFL 2003, Tribes, Aerial Assault, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. I know there's a couple of them I'm forgetting, but these were some of the most prominent games at the time, right around the time the game, uh, the online functionality launched. Those are just a few games that came out on launch. There were actually quite a few titles for the PlayStation 2 that went online. Many of them didn't really catch on and they just kind of existed. Now if you go back and look at some of the first titles, you will see a strong lineup for online sports games, something that I never really got into. It's nice that they had those games, but I think a lot of the sports fans were playing on Xbox. If not at that time, then definitely with the Xbox 360, because that seemed to be a lot more of a sports centric type console. But the majority of my time was spent with EverQuest Online Adventures and SOCOM 2. And that's the case for a lot of people in terms of SOCOM 2. At one point, SOCOM 2 boasted more online players than all of Xbox Live's games combined. So it was certainly a very interesting era for gamers and it is hands down 110% my favorite gaming era of all time. A lot of people my age, they have like Nintendo or Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis as their favorite console. No, for me, it's definitely PlayStation 2. And not just due to its online functionality, they had some absolutely phenomenal games on the system. We're talking Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, San Andreas, Silent Hill 2 and 3, Final Fantasy X, and on and on and on. There are so many games that I'm not even going to attempt to list a fraction of them here. You have to keep in mind though, the PlayStation 2 is a console that stayed in production for 13 years. They were still cranking these suckers out all the way up until almost 2013. So it's been a good run, and it's one of those things where the console kind of slowly died off slowly, really slowly, and the, the, the last gasp was Final Fantasy XI. It just makes you think, because it, it, it seems like it was just yesterday that all of this stuff came out, and then you fast forward and gaming is so completely different than what it was back then, it's just unrecognizable for the most part. Back in those days, if a game was patched, it was because it was an online game like SOCOM. Something like Jack and Daxter didn't get patched. You didn't have patches for games. They either came out and they worked, or there were bugs that just really sucked. So there was a lot more going into post-production on these games for bugs to be found. It seems like developers are a lot more lazy these days, and they release games with bugs because they know they can patch it. And DLC, this was the last console to be safe from DLC. And not even PlayStation 2 was 100% safe from DLC. I can think of at least one instance where we had some DLC content on SOCOM 2. However, I don't think the maps cost anything. I think you just had to have the hard disk drive. It's been years, I'm pretty sure they were free. I never played Last Bastion or Liberation, and that's always been a regret of mine. It's just something that I never got to do with the SOCOM series. Obviously, you have to mention Resident Evil Outbreak, a game that was phenomenal, was ahead of its time, didn't get as much attention as it deserved, and still stands as the best Resident Evil Online experience ever. Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, many, many hours lost in those games. I can't say lost, I definitely knew where I was, but I pissed those hours away. And I would do it all again because I had so much fun with both of those titles. Champions of Norath 1 and Return to Arms. Two games that were phenomenal, phenomenal Baldur's Gate EverQuest style games. It's like if you took Baldur's Gate and just painted it with an EverQuest brush. That's what those games were. I never understood why we didn't get a part three. Phenomenal, challenging games, not your typical hack and slash. You actually had to use some strategy. If you just button mashed in this game, you will die. So phenomenal series I would love to see make a comeback. Although that's highly unlikely considering the cutthroat bastards behind that game, but we're not going to get into that in this video. 
And before I wrap this up, I just want to mention the first PlayStation 2 game that I ever played, Dynasty Warriors. The first time I ever played this game was in a Toys R Us, and I was blown away by how fluid and fast the action was. We had never seen anything like that up to this point. The first game that I ever purchased with the console when I finally got it and I got my hands on it and had it at home was The Bouncer from Square Enix. This is an obscure game that probably a lot of you don't remember. It was a fighting game. A lot of fun. Not perfect, but it was fun. So right now I want to hear from you guys down in the comments section below. I want to hear about your favorite PlayStation 2 game. I want to hear about your favorite online PlayStation 2 game. Your first PlayStation 2 game. Anything PlayStation related, feel free to share it down below, please. I love reading your guys' comments, and long live the memory of the PlayStation 2. I thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.